All right guys, we're picking up pretty much where we left off in the last video. We've got the exhaust manifold on, engine and gearbox back in the car. Um, I'm basically just trying to figure out where exactly the turbo is going to go. All right, after a lot of testing different things, this is what I've come up with. Um, it's not fully welded in place yet, but you get the idea. Um, it's pretty close to everything, as usual. Um, I'm going to chop a bit more of this out, which will free up a bit more space up top there. The only thing that's going to be an issue is the compressor outlet pipe that was originally going to go through here is now going to have to go through here, which, like I mentioned before, is not ideal because all this is going to be super hot. So, yeah, I'm not sure exactly what we're going to do about that, um, but we'll figure something out. So, yeah, let's finish welding this up and then we'll go from there. Right, so that's all welded on now. That one didn't go too badly, to be fair. Um, what we're gonna do now is weld these things on, which are exhaust gas temperature sensors. Now, there's gonna be one of these on each runner. Let me get this somewhere you can see. I've marked out the positions already when I had it in the car. Um, but yeah, so roughly where these little marks are, it's gonna be one of those. Um, and then there'll be a sensor going into that on each of these runners. And the reason for that is that so you can tune individual cylinders basically because you have we're gonna have an oxygen sensor or a lambda sensor Whatever you want to call it um, somewhere like down here or after the turbo I'm not sure exactly where but somewhere down here um, And that lets you tune sort of each bank essentially But you can't you, you can you only get like an, an average of all three cylinders on each side When you measure it just down here because obviously they all merge together So to help tune individual cylinders for the exact right air fuel mixture you're gonna have a temperature sensor on each of these I'm not sure exactly what the reasoning is behind having a temperature sensor rather than an oxygen sensor on each one. I guess oxygen sensors are bigger, more expensive, more complicated. It's, it's kind of easier because like we're still going to have the oxygen sensor so you can still use that as your sort of main source to tune everything and then like the temperature sensor just sort of helps fine tune it. I don't know, I'll speak to Abby about it when we, um, when we go down there and we'll do like a full video when we're mapping it, go through a few things like that with them. But yeah, um, for now I'm just going to drill holes, weld these on, um, see how that goes. There we go, one, two, three, all done. So now we're gonna move on to something else. I don't know what, but something. So I'm trying to find a good place to mount the external wastegates. Um, obviously there's gonna be two of them, but we're just focusing on this side where we've done the exhaust manifold so far. And the original plan was to put them up here. So something, something like that. The straight bit of metal you can see there is the exhaust manifold. So yeah, coming off the exhaust manifold before the turbo um, and have them there, but with all the fittings, like especially the water fittings and stuff, it's going to be too tight, I think. Um, I'm going to trim some more of this secondary firewall bit, but I don't think you get that much more clearance at that point down there. So it's going to be too tight for the, for the screamer pipe that's coming off there, and it's going to be too tight for the water fittings. So I don't think that's going to work. So we're going to look underneath. Right, so now we're underneath the car. I'm thinking the best idea is going to be to have a pipe come off here and sort of come back this way. Um, and just have the wastegate somewhere around here. So I'm going to cut some of the pipe that's the right size now, um, notch it so that it fits around this tube, and then we'll see where we are. Right, I've cut some different notched angles out of some pipe. Um, this one's like a longer angle, which means it ends up being more sort of like pointing downwards more But it's much taller piece so it ends up going sort of right up towards where the bend is The other one is a shorter angle, smaller angle, so it ends up being a bit more sort of horizontal um, But it fits a lot nicer because it's a sort of smaller piece So yeah, I think um, we're gonna go for this one um, But yeah, and then we're gonna bring the the wastegate somewhere around here I'm trying not to get it in the way of that, but I think it might just have to be and I'll just have to accept that I have to take the external wastegate off if I need to change the um, gearbox oil it's not like you do that very often so it shouldn't be too big of a deal right so this is how it's going to be something like that 
know if you can see very well, but that's what we're going for. Um, so I need to cut this whole section out. Unfortunately, I've not got a hole saw that's the right size, so I'm going to have to do it a bit smaller and then just use a die grinder or a file or whatever to trim it out. It's going to take quite a while, but yeah. Um, I mean, even if I did have one that's the right size, it's not the perfect circle, as you can tell, because it's on an angle, so either way, there'd be a bit of filing and grinding involved. But yeah, let's get this over with. One eternity later. Right, I finally got that hole drilled in the um, exhaust manifold. Sorry I didn't film it all, it took fucking forever. Um, and I just got fed up of like trying to position the camera to actually be able to see it. But yeah, I got it done, but more exciting than that. All right guys, we've actually got a turbo on the car, mounted, not being held up by anything other than the exhaust manifold. So actually in its final position, this is like, this is a bit of a milestone. And you know, we've actually got a turbo on the car. That probably doesn't sound like much, but it's quite a milestone after like several weeks of just doing the exhaust manifold shit. Um, obviously I've still got some bits to finish with the um, external wastegate. But yeah, turbo actually on in its final position. And if I go and get the um, intake pipes, stuff actually looks like it might fit. All right, so if we get this intake pipe, which I've cut down a bit already, but it needs to be cut down further. You can see, well, you probably can't see, but it just about clears it. And like I said, we'll cut it down a little bit more. So yeah, that's exciting, isn't it? We've got a turbo. No one's excited, except me. I'm pretty excited. Right, I think I've figured out where the best place is gonna be for the external wastegate. So I've just made a few pie cuts, so I'll take them together. I'm just trimming this straight bit down now, and then we'll go test fit it, see if it ends up in about the right place. Right, so I've got everything to the right length. I um, just tacked these uh, pie cuts and the V-band flange on. It's my first time using V-band flanges as well. Gotta say I'm liking them so far, because um, it doesn't matter what orientation you weld them on in. You just stick it on wherever you want, because it's circular, it's fine. So yeah, um, hopefully they'll be a lot more reliable than bolts and gaskets as well. So that's gonna go like that, somewhere around there. Um, I'll try and show you with the wastegate on. Right, so with the wastegate on, it's gonna be somewhere around there. Um, it is gonna be pretty low. Like it's gonna be one of the lowest points. It's gonna be probably equal with the, um, the oil drain from the turbo. But um, yeah, if I go any higher, you start hitting stuff on the gearbox, like with these um, water fittings and things like that. So yeah, um, obviously I've still got to do the screamer pipe. That's going to pretty much just go straight down to the ground. Um, but let's just get this bit all welded up fully. And then uh, we'll worry about the screamer pipe after that. This is going pretty badly. Yeah, pretty much done. There's a couple of little bits that didn't go very nicely though. Right, so we've got the V-band flange welded on there. Went okay, like the welds turned out all right. Um, some sketchy bits as usual. So yeah, this is all pretty much done. Gonna go test fit it on the car, make sure it all lines up, decide exactly what orientation we want it in, and then just tack it in place. All right, so we've got everything tacked in place now. Um, the welder ran out of gas though, so I couldn't finish it all off, but I've just been in, got another bottle, so we'll finish that in a sec. But yeah, that's where it's all gonna sit. Um, pretty close to everything as usual. Pretty low as well, like I mentioned before, but we will have a skid plate under here protecting it, so it's not the end of the world. I've also cut a few pie cuts, tacked them together, and this is gonna be the um, screamer pipe. Obviously it's not finished yet, but you get the idea. It's gonna go down like that and then sort of come off down here. So yeah, now that we've got some more gas, let's go finish off all that welding, get this made up. And then that's pretty much this whole external wastegate setup done, as much as we can do for now anyway. We've still got to sort out the actual um, boost control and the, the um, water lines and all that stuff, but in terms of fabricating stuff, we're pretty much done after this. So yeah, let's get cracking. Still hot. Now. There we go. She's all done. All right, so we've got the screwing pipe on the car now, and uh, yeah, it might change at some point, but that's kind of just the design I've gone for for now. Keeps it out of the way of stuff. 
And that's the whole external wastegate setup done now. All right, so I think that'll do for this video. Like I say, I'm trying to keep these to like once a week. Um, so yeah, it's roughly been a week since the last one. So that's what I've been up to this week. Next week, we're gonna be carrying on with the other side of the exhaust manifold. I know it's gonna end up being kind of the same video that the last two have been, but I figure it's better than just not putting any videos out for two weeks while I do that one. So um, yeah, it will be a little bit samey. I'll try and find some better ways to film the welding because that is, obviously takes up a lot of it and it's kind of hard for you guys to see much with the way I'm filming it at the moment, I think. So we'll change that up a bit if we can and um, make it a little bit better. Oh, and actually, just before I go, I'll take the manifold off the car um, and show you it on the floor so you can see the whole thing because you've probably only seen it sort of under the car at the moment. So I'll show you the whole thing and um, you get some idea of the way I've designed it. Don't look too closely at my welding, um, but yeah, let's have a look at that. All right, so this is the full exhaust manifold. Obviously my first time ever making anything like this. It's not even like just my first exhaust manifold, it's my first time making anything anywhere near this complicated. So it was never gonna go particularly well, but I don't know, I'm, I'm kind of happy with how it's turned out. There's some bits that I really don't like, but I think that was always gonna be the case with the first one that I ever made. Um, hopefully the second side will go a bit quicker. I can't believe it's taken this long just to make this one bit of this turbo system. But yeah, hopefully it'll go a bit quicker from here. A um, Couple of things to point out, these bits here that have ground down around each of those holes, that's because the nuts that sit on, on here that join it to the engine, they sit so close to this that there isn't even enough room for the weld bead in there. So I had to basically weld it and then grind it down because the only other alternative was just not weld that section at all and that would be bad. So yeah, I've not done that. Um, so yeah, it doesn't look pretty, but whatever. Um, the only other thing is these two runners are very close. Like there's not much of a gap there. So once everything heats up and expands, I don't know, we might have some potential issues there, but hopefully not. So yeah, that's it. It is actually fully complete now this side. The only thing left to do, which is not for me to do, is to get it coated with the Zircotec coating um, to keep the temperatures down, which I wasn't going to do originally, but because we are so tight for space, I think it's going to be kind of a necessity. And because some of the intake piping is going to be running a lot closer to this than I originally intended, yeah, we're going to get the um, Zircotec coating on there, which is fucking expensive, but hopefully it'll be worth it. All right, so yeah, that's it for this video. Um, I'll see you next week, which, like I say, we'll be doing the uh, other side of the exhaust manifold. So, see you there.